Hi everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to be discussing a, a paper that recently came out entitled Psychedelics, a novel approach to treating autoimmune diseases. Before we dive into this paper, um, I thought I'd just introduce myself for those of you that are new to our channel. My name is Alex Manos. I am one of the co-founders of Health Path and I'm a certified functional medicine practitioner with a background in nutritional therapy, massage therapy, and personal training. And I'm obviously host of the Health Path podcast. Um, I guess in some ways more related to today's topic, I'm also a transformational breath facilitator intern, a transformational life coach, and I'm currently a, a trainee to become a psychedelic practitioner. So I, I guess I, at the moment I am a, a passionate advocate for the therapeutic use of psychedelics, uh, which is one of the reasons why I really wanted to create this short video discussing this paper, because the majority of people who tune into our channel are often curious, interested, want to learn about things like autoimmunity and gut health. And it's important for us to have that breadth of awareness that there are many things that can be considered to support our health journey. And psychedelics are one of them if we are able to access, um, essentially at this point in time in the UK, legal retreat settings. Unfortunately, that means that unless you're able to take part in some of the studies that are taking place at places like Imperial College London, it means going to countries such as Portugal and the Netherlands, whereby um, psychedelics have legality. Um, there is a clinic in Bristol, the first of its kind, a psychedelic clinic for those that are, are interested and want to reach out to them as well. Uh, the clinic, I believe, is just called Awaken. So the objectives are very simple. We're just going to summarize some of the key points from this paper um, to share with you all. So to begin with, really the authors discuss how there is a breadth of research from a variety of different fields suggesting that psychedelics do indeed have effects in the body that may attenuate the outcome of autoimmune diseases. And the review really explores the existing evidence that psychedelic, psychedelic compounds can offer potential novel application in the treatment of pathologies related to autoimmunity. And an interesting piece to this is that we're starting to see that various conditions that we once thought weren't necessarily autoimmune related potentially may be and that list includes major depressive disorder, schizophrenia, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis but we could also put in this list cardiovascular disease as well. There's research on chronic fatigue syndrome having an autoimmune element to it. So the list is quite long in regards to conditions that have evidence behind them as potentially having this autoimmune connection. So the authors of this paper really propose that psychedelics hold the potential to attenuate or even resolve autoimmunity by targeting psychosomatic origins, maladaptive chronic stress responses, inflammatory pathways, immune modulation, and the enteric microbiome population. So these are the five factors that we're gonna kind of just briefly cover today. What does the research show us in regards to how psychedelics um, influence these five factors and how are these five factors related to autoimmunity as well? Well, in the paper, the authors talk about the characteristics of autoimmune disease, things like inflammation, HPA, dysfunction, really referring to the adrenal glands and the stress system. But we also see things like dysbiosis and imbalance within the microbiome. We do see a strong relationship between trauma and stress and autoimmunity, nutrient deficiencies, infections and mitochondrial dysfunction. So I think it's really important to say here that I am certainly not proposing that psychedelics are a magic bullet, that they're going to be able to improve or resolve autoimmunity. 
because there are many things that need to be considered within the context of autoimmune diseases. What I will say is I have spoken with people and you read cases in psychedelic books and in the psychedelic literature where people have experienced this. So my, my interest, I think, lies in those cases. You know, what are the themes, what are the variables that have allowed some people to experience incredible improvement, if not remission, in their autoimmune disease as a result of using psychedelics in a safe and therapeutic setting. So with that in mind, the, they also speak about the theories around autoimmune disease. Some of these we've mentioned, such as trauma, such as infections, gut health and inflammation and dietary changes. But let's not forget that literature shows us that an overuse of antibiotics may increase our predisposition to autoimmunity, partly because of the impact it has on our gut microbiome and on our potentially on our mitochondria. But as a result of that, the impact that they may have on our immune system as well. Things like our mode of birth, whether we were a C-section or vaginal delivery, whether we were breastfed or bottle fed, and our exposure to environmental toxins have all been discussed as potential contributors or causes to autoimmune disease. So this is a very complex, big field, and psychedelics play a very small piece within this big puzzle. So we're gonna look at the most relevant ones based on this paper, and we're gonna start with stress or slash trauma. So in this paper, the authors discuss how there is strong evidence showing us that traumatic experiences, especially in childhoods, have been associated with the development of autoimmune disease um, at some point in our life. And this is often referred to as adverse childhood events. There is extensive research showing us that traumatic experiences in childhood increase the likelihood of developing uh, disease later on in life. And in fact, this is a, a little image that I put together for my sort of social media account, which just breaks down the different types of adverse childhood events. And this is based on the research. So there is abuse, we can have it neglect, or we might experience household dysfunction. And abuse could be physical, it could be emotional, or it could be sexual. Neglect can be physical or emotional. And then in regard to household dysfunction, this refers to things like divorce, drug abuse, witnessing violence within our home, mental illness or incarceration. And the research shows that if we experience four or more of these in our childhoods, that seems to be a sort of almost a threshold whereby we have significantly increased risk of going on to develop dis-ease. And it's thought that that could be related to a sort of nervous immune and stress system, which develops sort of appropriately based on the context of that upbringing, but that becomes sort of a maladaptive response. We eventually end up with excessive wear and tear because of how our nervous system, our immune system, and our stress systems have developed throughout our childhood. So psychedelic compounds, including psilocybin found in magic mushrooms, LSD and MDA and ayahuasca, they are currently being explored for their promising potential to assist treating trauma-derived illnesses ranging from PTSD to depression and also addiction. And this research goes back really to the 50s. We've known that psychedelics have a role to play within treating these sorts of conditions for quite some time now. And a quote from the paper that we're sort of summarizing today, therapeutic outcome of psychedelic assisted psychotherapy could resolve or improve stressful psychological states that cause or contribute to physiological outcomes seen in the majority of autoimmune disease patients. So we can see how psychedelics may play a role within improving or resolving autoimmunity via the impact they have on our physiology that's associated with stress and trauma, especially in our childhood. But what about inflammation? 
From an inflammatory perspective, we know that inflammation is a keystone feature in many chronic condi conditions, including autoimmune disease. We see elevated levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Cytokines are immune messages. They're regulating and modifying the immune system, um, influencing specific immune cells, relocating to specific sites in the body, and essentially uh, managing that immune inflammatory response. So cytokines such as interleukin-16, TNF-alpha, um, TNF-alpha, interleukin-12, interleukin-17, these are pro-inflammatory molecules that we often see elevated in those with autoimmunity. Now, I'm not aware of research from a psychedelic perspective seeing a reduction in those specific pro-inflammatory cytokines, but we do have human studies showing us that C-reactive protein, a well-known molecule or marker for systemic inflammation, is reduced post-psychedelic use in depressed volunteers and healthy volunteers. That may be short term, but I still think that is something for us to be mindful of. We're sort of remodulating that psychoneuroimmune axis i.e. our psyche or our nervous system, our immune system. And then we have infections. So we, we know that infections can be a trigger for autoimmunity. We see various organisms ranging from the Epstein-Barr virus to other herpes family viruses to Borrelia, which has been associated with Lyme disease. And we see a lot of imbalances within the GI tract, such as SIBO, leaky gut, and just general imbalances within the microbiome, all contributing to a dysregulated immune system and potentially autoimmune disease. And a quote from the research paper, interestingly, is that certain constituents in psychedelic plants, such as the ayahuasca vine and the peyote cactus, display specific antimicrobial effects. Which kind of then ties us into or leads us into the role that gut health plays within autoimmunity and the role that psychedelics may play within improving gut health. So LPS, lipopolysaccharides, these are inflammatory components on the cell wall of certain bacteria that can be referred to as gram-negative bacteria. And we know that they can induce inflammation and excessive oxidative stress, and that that may play a role within elevated inflammatory biomarkers seen in those with autoimmunity. For those watching this video, because I will also share just the audio file in our podcast, you will see a really sort of fascinating, I think, and really helpful visual from a research paper discussing the role of the immune system in major psychiatric disorders. And the paper discusses the role of the gut in initiating that immune activation. And this is where changes to the microbiome uh, within the context of leaky gut or intestinal permeability allow certain components such as this LPS pro-inflammatory molecule through into our circulation where it creates a inflammatory response that if chronic is gonna to contribute to various conditions, including things like depression. Now to bring this back to the role that psychedelics play, it's thought that the emotional and psychological benefits of psychedelics may indirectly alter the microbiome of the gut via changes in vagal nerve tone, changes in the stress response, but also in the enteric environment. Remember that we've just mentioned that certain constituents of some of these well-known psychedelics seem to have antimicrobial properties. Several studies have also explored the effects of chronic stress and resulting conditions like PTSD on microbiome pattern associations. So this is almost a bottom-up and top-down potential. You know, by modulating the vagus nerve and the stress response, we know that that can have a favorable impact on digestive function and microbiome. 
And then we have a bottom up perspective, which is changes to the microbiome, maybe as a result of those things, or maybe as a result of those antimicrobial properties of some of these psychedelics, then we're going to see a positive improvement potentially in behavior, which we do. And this is, I think, a really powerful, well put together quote from the paper. The psychological and neurological benefits from a psychedelic experience may create biochemical cascades and systemic physiology, specifically within the HPA axis and the enteric nervous system, which may downstream influence the ecology of microbial populations. We have to appreciate that although we're all increasingly aware of this concept of disease starts in the gut, that actually gut health is dependent on systemic health just as much. So imbalances within any of these systems, whether it's the HPA axis, whether it's our sort of more systemic immune system, these things impact the capacity or the potential to have a healthy microbiome. These bugs are dependent on not just the nutrition that we are eating, but our overall health and the overall environment that we are living in. So if we are able to shift systemic physiology, if we're able to dampen that inflammation, if we're able to help resolve early childhood traumas that are leading to dysregulation within a lot of these different biological systems, it would make sense that that is going to lead to this cascade of systemic physiology change. So it's a really nice holistic way to think about all of these things and how they're interconnected. So the authors um, say, it suggests psychedelics may be helpful in mitigating inflammation caused by LPS due to increased intestinal permeability and chronic gut dysbiosis or uh, imbalances within the gut microbiome. So to conclude, unlike many current conventional treatment methods, it appears that psychedelics may potentially offer an efficacious strategy for relieving and perhaps even resolving autoimmunity by targeting psycho-spiritual origins, maladaptive chronic stress responses, inflammatory pathways, immune modulation, and enteric microbiome populations. The evidence presented in this paper provides support to the idea that there is untapped potential of exploring the use of psychedelics within this specific disease category. So I hope you found that as interesting as I have. Um, there is more research that I will be sharing with you on this channel, exploring the potential use of psychedelics from a neurodegenerative perspective, for example, for Alzheimer's disease. So stay tuned for some videos coming soon. If you'd like to learn more about our services, then by all means, head over to our website, healthpath.com. We do also offer free 15 minute consultations and you can book in via our website for those as well. And we'll be more than happy to, to chat to you about how we may be able to support you on your health journey. But for now, thank you for listening, everyone. As I say, I hope you found it interesting and uh, I'll be back soon with more content.